in my last video I showed you how I was reading through my text um, checking spellings and things like that but also drawing very little illustrations as I was going along just the things that coming out of my head that I felt the right thing to do so from this drawing then I've done this drawing which is the finished rough which I sent to my editor and uh, Janet she said great care to get on with the artwork so I've done the finished drawing in ink and I'm going to paint this in grayscale because it's a black and white book. But that's what I've done already, so I'll just show you how I got to that point. And the paper I'm using is C. White's of Brighton Heavyweight Cartridge. I really like this paper. I've just sort of come to find it's just really good for the job. So I'm turning the light box on and I want to adjust this. So it's kind of in the middle a bit like that. And then I'm actually getting a brand new <laughs> Tiki Graphic 0.3 out of my um, stationary cupboard. People always ask me about this pen and why I use it. I'm not sponsored by Rotary, but I do love this pen. Um, and there are links below, Amazon links below, if you want to f sort of get one yourself. The reason I like this is in the old days, the old Rotary pens used to have um, Indian ink in them. And they would clog up very quickly, and so you'd spend a whole lot of time um, just kind of emptying out, cleaning. There was a whole ritual you used to do. <laughs> and I suppose for a while, when I first started out, I used to kind of quite like that ritual. It was kind of like part of being a proper professional designer and that you kind of had to clean out your rotary pen. But I soon got bored with that. And they're always getting sticky and gummed up and dripping all over the place. Um, and, and then I found a while back, I, I just stopped using sort of pen and ink for a while. And then I found out they were making these. Um, and I just love them. And it's, um, it's a fibre tip and you get them all in different sizes. And the most important thing about it for me is that it is waterproof and it really is waterproof. And that was the thing I liked about the old way of using a road ring that they were definitely waterproof because you were using Indian ink and uh, and when you then watercolor over the top the ink doesn't spread uh, and that is one thing about the <laughs> Rotary Tiffy graphic is you can rely on it that it's not going to spread and some pens which call themselves uh, I think what is it called it calls itself a pigment ink some pens that call themselves pigment ink they still kind of bleed when you add watercolour on the top somehow and uh, this has no, nothing has come close as far as I'm concerned <laughs> to the Tiki graphic so that's why I use them all the time and you can I can say you can stop asking me what is that pen you use but I know it's not going to stop I get lots and lots and lots and lots of comments saying what is that pen that you use <laughs> it's yeah it's it's a slightly softer nib too i think if you're using uh, the old style metal nibs they can get quite scratchy and they bend as well and sometimes actually these bend and i like that even more <laughs> sometimes you can put a little bit too much pressure on them and the, the fibers collapse and then they become really quite interesting and uh, i really like doing lettering when they sort of collapse so I save the ones that break. I think, you know, <laughs> they're really, really, really nice. So, and there are times I have um, uh, broken them on purpose. So what am I doing here? I'm just, I'm just inking in basically. And so we'll bring that down to about there. And what have we got going on here? There's a horde of hairy bearded men who are the um, the ancient Britain reenactment society in this story. And they're, they're, their blood is up. <laughs> they love dragons. And one of these dragons is their mascot. They don't really get it that these really are real dragons. And it's not about playing for the soldiers at the weekend and <laughs> playing ancient britons at the weekend they don't quite get that this is the real thing but uh, they're soon about to find out <laughs> harry who is the the hero of the story his his teacher at school is the the leader of the pack and um i've really enjoyed writing his character he's very funny i think he's very passionate <laughs> 
very passionate, very deluded and misguided at the same time. So we'll have a few little extra kind of flecks of flame going off like that. So this is a kind of a nighttime scene and they're all going <laughs> with their swords and axes and stuff. I'm going to speed through this now. Now, if you're watching this on Patreon, you'll be able to see me draw the next illustration and paint the next illustration as well. That's one of the benefits of supporting me on Patreon. Right, now this is slightly distorted because I've got the board at an angle here. And what I'm doing is I'm taping this down to the board. Now, if you like this kind of video, why don't you subscribe to watch more? So this is going to be painted entirely in grayscale. I've shown you this before, but the paint that I use is Windsor and Newton neutral tint, and it's in their artist range. So it's a bit more expensive. Uh, in their Cotman range, then you can use Davies Grey, which is just as good. I'm quite happy interchanging between the two, but I've just got used to neutral tint over the years. Now I've got to start somewhere, so I'm going to start um, around the flames, I think, and. Again, I'm always asked about these brushes. So this is the uh, Pentel Aquash brush. It's a water brush. They, they all have different kind of names. And somebody asked me recently, do I prefer this or the Derwent? Well, actually, I prefer this one because it has the bigger brush on it. And it just sort of suits my style. And I think... You can get thinner brushes, you can get flat brushes, you can get all sorts of things, but this just really suits me. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just wetting the paper really around the flames. And then I'm gonna kind of let it bleed in. What I'm actually trying to do is to avoid having the um, paint on the edge of the paper if possible, because Sometimes, if you've got a lot of paint on the edge of the paper, and then that's going to print on the edge of the book. So when it gets cut, you know, you get kind of marks on the edge of the book. And so that's sort of what I'm trying to avoid. And then I'll try and make that a bit lighter up there as well. That kind of fades out to the top again here. I'm trying. Another change of thought. I put the name blue one, but I thought it was a bit summery. So what about this one? Mrs. Rain has just entered oh, the sorry. room. She wants me to check her dress is okay because we're going out for lunch later. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> you can edit that bit out. Um. <laughs> so there we go. Mrs. Rayner is happy. She knows what she's wearing. What I'm trying to do is to have space down the edges here as well, so that when you trim the book, you don't get those kind of messy bits on the edge of the book. It will do at the bottom here. So, so it's got to happen somewhere, I'm afraid. So, so now I'm trying to make it sort of darker down here. There's going to be some point where it's going to become messy. So you need, yeah, so I suppose while you're illustrating, you need to think about the book as well. In fact, you do. As a book illustrator, you need to be thinking about the book the whole time and uh, what, how the book is going to look rather than just, it's not just one illustration. In fact, I think I had a comment on a video last week which made me think, I think I'm going to do a video about sort of what makes the difference between a book illustrator and a what I would call an editorial illustration, uh, illustrator, somebody who just sort of does a one-off illustration, like for a birthday card or for, a, you know, a cartoon in a newspaper or magazine, that kind of thing. So I think I might do a video about that. So... Basically here I'm just kind of building up, I'm adding and adding and building up the darkness in the background so so that I know it's a kind of, it's going to be my kind of base level of, of darkness to know where everything else will be then. So this is kind of the night sky essentially that I'm doing in the background. Then when I'm happy with that level of darkness then I can uh, do the rest. Good, I think that's about there now. So now um, I can think about these kind of hairy clothes. <laughs> Basically, I think all these warriors, are, are they're all 
ex-teachers or whatever. <laughs> they're all history teachers who <laughs> go out and play ancient Britons and go fighting each other every weekend and uh, they just it's it's an excuse for a bit of a booze up really and uh, meeting all your pals having a bit of a fight <laughs> and then uh, having a beer afterwards so they all dress up and they're, they're all old hippies basically I think is what, is what it is and uh, I think all around the country in the summer you get all these reenactment groups there's, you know, from different wars and historical periods. They all meet up and so they have a really good time and they're all old mates. They're all old friends who keep sort of meeting up. Um, I think it looks like they had a bit of texture in here on that one. And then I think maybe a bit of kind of plaid style on that one. I can probably do a bit of plaid style on this one too. I'm thinking about the shadows now, adding them in. I'm doing some very simple kind of shading really on the hands. Nothing too complicated. And then all the time I'm kind of thinking of just kind of taking things down deeper and deeper, so it's contrast, I suppose, is, is what we're working towards. I think these need to be quite dark. The f f flaming brands, like that. so those are all going to be dark, whatever, aren't they? The... But then these need sort of ambient light shining, catching the light of the fire brands. And I know someone will be asking, have I got any reference photography for this? No, this is all entirely out of my head. So no, no reference photography anyway. I haven't looked at any pictures. I did a, a, a video recently on draw stuff real easy, how to draw a sword hand. So I suppose in the back of my mind that has um, been helping. And now with these handles, of course, you know, you've got reflection of the, the flames in there as well. So they don't want to be just dark. Now I'm going to kind of put shadow underneath there just to help bring the axe forward. Uh, so sometimes you need to shade things in to help the thing that's in front <laughs> stand out. Like here, I think we can make that darker in there. I'm going to add a bit of shadow in there and a bit of shadow in there. And at the same time, as I'm adding shadow, then I'm kind of adding texture in as well to the kind of the hairy sliceness of the sleeve. I think these browns can be quite darker as well. Now I realise I'm taking the brush away up from the camera this is what I'm doing I'm sort of dip dabbing onto a little piece of ki kitchen towel here to because the water keeps flowing down the brush and so with a little bit of a squeeze and you just completely clean the brush like that and I suppose in the old days you'd have heard a ding ling 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 as I was washing out the brush in a jam jar I think we really just need to work on these swords now so, oh, somebody told me the name of this and I've forgotten it already. <laughs> it's a kind of a little... I thought it would be a thing that, you know, to help the blood flow down the middle of the saw, but in fact it's to uh, add strength. <laughs> it's kind of a little runnel down the uh, length of the saw, just to add strength and also to make the sword lighter as well. To, um... So in some ways you need a sword to be heavy to give it good weight for chopping, but in other ways you need, don't want it to be too heavy that you can't lift the thing up. So I'm also, I suppose, trying to get a bit of movement into brush strokes here as well, just to add a bit of kind of life into it. And there's something going on there. I think that needs to be darker there. <clears throat> so we have some sort of more darker, intense sky part here. And it's just, it's just this constantly working it, adding 
taking it darker and darker. There is a point where you'll take it too dark and then, <laughs> and then there's nothing for it. <laughs> you think, oh, I've ruined it. And there's nothing else you can do but just scrap it and start again. I've had to do that so many times. And that's how you learn, I suppose. And you get to a point where you think, oh, this is getting, this is getting a bit too dark. Oh, this is getting on the edge. And then you start taking it more slowly and just kind of add more slowly until you can feel, yep, that's it. And I think so often with watercolour, I think with, with you know, acrylics and oil, you can kind of scrape it off and start again. You can't do that with watercolour. It's all or nothing. And if you get it wrong, there's nothing to do, nothing you can do, but just start again. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it just takes a lot more experience, I suppose. I'm just going to add a little bit of something there to bring the forward one forward more and I'm going to call that it no just a little bit more <laughs> I'm going to call that it there you go. now viewers on Patreon will be able to see me illustrate the next uh, illustration completely live uncut that's one of the benefits of supporting me on Patreon thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page click to find out more Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel on YouTube. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.